Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Steam Time, which is an odyssey across the arc of civilization powered by steam and driven by glory. Sound good? Well, let's get right to it. I've already got the game set up here as a two-player game. I'll be the green player, Jen will be the blue player. And what's going on here is it's the uh, turn of the century. It's 1899, I believe. And mankind has discovered all kinds of strange phenomenon around all these big monuments, Easter Island and Stonehenge and the Great Wall of China and the pyramids and, and stuff like that. And apparently, all these sites are kind of temporal vortexes and, and we've discovered how to leverage them to be able to travel back in time! Oh my goodness! And so, the governments of the world have created time-traveling zeppelins because it's the era of steam to travel back in time and exploit all the riches and glories thereof. And that's what we're going to be doing throughout this game. We're going to be playing through five rounds. And this is a worker placement game. Each <clears throat> of the five rounds, we have three Zeppelins that we can send to the different monuments to do stuff traveling through time. And there are several different things we can do. And along the way, we will also be able to upgrade our Zeppelins with these powerful time crystals that we can pick up at various places that make us better at certain activities. So that's the big picture. As part of setup, well, these are, like I said, these are the five monuments. And I'm playing, like I said, a two-player game, which means I'm looking at the two-player sides of all these boards. If I were looking at the four-player side, you'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five worker placement spots I can go to. But in the two-player game, there's only one, two, three spots. So the board tightens up depending on how many players you've got. And in this first round of the game, there are three expeditions we can go on in the Kingdom Punt. Shangri-La and Anderson Creek. We there are let's see, those are expeditions. There are three missions we can go on in in um, you know, over here at the Great Wall of China and Stonehenge and Easter Island. These are all the crystals that have shown up. These are the three upgrades we can install on our zeppelins, and we also we always have three opportunities to meet famous historical people as well as we travel through time. And then there's also some opportunities just to make some money and get some resources. Right. <clears throat> I'm starting the game as the first player with eight bucks, as does Jen. I've got my three workers, and since I'm the first player, I'm holding on the, the uh, first player marker. But Jen will be able to take this from me if she wants to. So let's get going. Now, on your turn, well, actually, the first thing that happens every round is you make income. If your Zeppelin has upgrades at the beginning of a round, you would get the income two bucks and a victory point in the case of this one. Or four bucks in the case of that one. Now, at the beginning of the game, of course, nobody has any upgrades, so we skip that in the first round. Now, we start doing actions. And my action can either be to take one of my three Zeppelins and visit one of these locations and, you know, one of the locations and one of the specific worker placement spots on the locations and do whatever that action is. Or I can snag the first player marker and do what it says, which is a choice of either spending steam up to 10 times to get up to 10 victory points or spending steam one time to get one wild card crystal, one of these transparent crystals over there. Now, <clears throat> every turn, that's your choice. Either do one of the worker placement actions or grab this. But since I already have it, on the very first turn of a round, I cannot take this for myself. But if Jen doesn't take it, then I'd be able to take it as my second of, th of actions if I wanted to. But So my first action, since I'm the first player, is I have to send one of my three Zeppelins to one of these locations. And now, <clears throat> there is an interesting restriction. Obviously, there's a certain number of spaces, and once I've taken this spot, nobody else can go there, as you might imagine. But there is the flow of time. Once I have placed my first worker, say I put it right here to do this particular action, I, for the remainder of this round, can I have to move forward in the stream of time. I can't place anything more on this space or the space behind it. The next placement will have to be here, or here, or here, or here. And then if I place my second one here, then my third and final placement will have to be in one of these two. So, over the course of the round, you start getting tighter and tighter. You know, if I start out, the very first thing I do is come here, then in my second turn, well, I'll probably have to come here, in my third turn, I'll have to come here because there's no going back. So, at the beginning, you want to start kind of down low uh, so that you leave yourself more opportunities for moving forward. So, what am I going to do? <clears throat> well, I think I'll come over here. I'll visit this uh, crystal cache. And when you visit one of these places, you can spend two bucks per crystal to buy crystals and install them on your Zeppelins to give yourself more power. So, there, I mean, if I had ten bucks, I could buy all five of these crystals, but at the beginning of the game, I only have eight. And of that eight, I think I'm going to spend one, two, three, four, 
five, six. I'm going to spend six of my eight bucks. All right. So I got two bucks left over. That just goes back in the bank. And I have bought these three crystals. Now it's two greens and a black. So they go into the next spaces available on my green crystal track and my black crystal track. And this represents taking and installing these crystals in my Zeppelins, which will give me special powers because, now this is universal, whenever you do an action, you'll notice all these different actions have different colored outlines. These are the orange actions. The, the outline of this is the gray actions. These are the violet actions. These are the black actions, the blue actions, and the green actions. Whenever you do any action, in this case, I've done a black outline, a black outlined action, which is the collect crystals. After you have done it, you come over and look at what upgrades you have, and you might be able to get bonus actions. I've done a black action, so I got to check what's my status on black crystals. Hey, I've got two black crystals. One I started with, uh, because I started with a green, a blue, a black, a uh, violet, and a gray. Jen, as the second player, started with the same plus. She also had a golden one, or an orange one. But anyway, so I just did a black outline. Since I'm full up, I've got all my black crystals, I get two wild card crystals. If I hadn't just bought this crystal for two bucks, then I'd only get one wild card crystal, but as it is, I get two. And so now I can install these in any of my other engines that are in here to give me more bonuses later on. Let's see here. And I think for starters, I'll install one here. So now my green upgrade path is 100% full, as is my black upgrade path. Which means I want to do green actions more often because whenever I do a green action, which means to take one of these missions, I will score one, two, three, four victory points every time I grab one of these because I've made myself strong at gathering missions. I got to put this somewhere too. Let's see here. What else do I want to make myself strong at? <clears throat> if I do that, I'll do that. Oh, that, uh, since I have no orange, I'll go on ahead and put this over here in orange. So now I've got a little bit. I've, you know, I'm strong in green. I'm strong in black. I'm weak in blue, fuchsia, gray, and orange. All right. And that was my first turn. And uh, that's the way it always works. You do the core action, and then afterwards, you see if you get any bonus actions depending on what crystals you have. Now it is Jen's turn. And Jen's got an interesting choice. She can either, now she can't come here, of course, but she could come down here. She could jump anywhere. Or, this is the first opportunity somebody has to grab first player. And if Jen is not in any particular hurry to grab some particular spot on the board that she might be worried I was going to snag, she might want to go on ahead and grab this because this would mean in this round, she would get to do four actions. The three Zeppelins plus this action as well. Whereas me, since I would only have uh, my three Zeppelins, I'd only get to do three actions. Jen gets to do four if she takes this. Now, if she doesn't take it, then when it gets back around to my turn, I have the opportunity to reclaim it for myself, and then I'd get four actions this round instead. So, Jen's got to decide, is there something she wants so bad? Well, you know what? Things are so wide open right now. She's good. She's got, you know, gems in every upgrade. So I don't think I think she's gonna go on ahead and snag the first player thing. So she has grabbed it, and now she immediately gets the action of spending um, up to 10 steam to get up to 10 points, or spending one steam and one steam only to get one crystal. Now, we each of us started with one steam, so Jen's going to spend one steam. I don't think she'll spend it to get one victory point, or a steam point they're called. Instead, she'll get it to get a wild card crystal of her own. And now she gets to install this and make some action of hers more powerful, just like I did. And so she needs to be thinking about what, I mean, once she starts placing these, what action is she going to try and do? Well, you know what I'm thinking? I think she probably wants to grab some upgrades early on. So she's going to upgrade the violet portion of her Zeppelin's engine so that she's now got two crystals here, which means she's got full power when she does the violet upgrade action. So that was Jen's first turn. She snagged first player. Now it's my turn. And so now I cannot do any of these actions. These are all denied me. I have to move further up the timeline so I can come here, 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 or here. And now, well, the interesting thing is since I'm really good at green and black, I probably want to do green and black actions. So I could come to either, and now if I come to this space, I only have two bucks left. So I could buy one more crystal, either uh, another orange one or a black one or a fuchsia one, and I'd get two victory points. 
but I'm really good at green action, so maybe I just want to go on ahead and jump all the way up here and, and grab a mission. Now, this, a mission means you take this, and at the end of the game, if you are able, you're, you're, you're taking on the mission to deliver, at the end of the game, five bucks. And if I can do that, I get two points for every five bucks, and I can do that up to four times. So I could turn up to 20 bucks into up to eight points. Because at the end of the game, your excess resources are worth nothing unless you've got missions to collect them. So, you know what, this sounds pretty good. I'm just going to go on ahead and jump right up here. I'm going to grab a mission. And so now, I've got an extra goal. At the end of the game, I want to make sure I've got 20 bucks so I can turn that into 8 points. I put this over here, face down. And uh, because I've just done a green action, I get 1, 2, 3, 4 victory points. Whoop. 1, 2, 3, 4. Hooray! Okay. <clears throat> now it's Jen's turn again. And she is finally going to get on the board. And remember, so she's upgraded her ability to, um, to upgrade. So she's probably going to want to jump on this, this, or this. And you'll upgrade her Zeppelin so that she'll start earning income for the rest of the game. Now, you'll get the income that this upgrade provides immediately, and then at the beginning of every round for the rest of the game. So whichever upgrade she gets is going to fire five times. So she grabs this one, that's going to be five bucks and ten points she gets over the course of the game. That's a pretty good return. Or on the flip side, five bucks and or you know ten bucks and five points, or um, you know twenty bucks right there. Hmm. Let's see here. So, well, no, yeah. Let's see. I think she'll be all about the points. So she's going to jump right here. So that means in a two-player game, I mean nobody can do any of these actions. Now, although there are some special case circumstances where you can go against the flow of time and jump backwards on the time stream, but for now, that's where Jen's gone. She is going to buy or you know acquire this upgrade to her Zeppelin fleet. Now, how does she do that? Well, she has to pay resources A, B, and C. What are those? Well, in the first round, this, this card, which was revealed at the beginning of the round, reveals that A is green, B is blue, and C is orange. So, for Jen to get this upgrade, she has to pay a green, a blue, and an orange crystal. And so, they all go back in the cup. And so, Jen has just stripped out half of her uh, special abilities. She now definitely doesn't want to bother doing green actions or orange actions or blue actions because she'll get no bonuses for them. She sacrificed those bonuses to instead have this upgrade for the rest of the game. Now, like I said, it fires immediately, so she just made another buck. And she just made two points. And because she just did a pink action, she activates this, which since she's put two um, things in here, she gets to do this twice, which is one, two. This swirly symbol means move um, clockwise around on this little whirly gig here, which again, I, the rules actually have thematic explanations for what all these different sections of your Zeppelin are. I forget what the name of this little whirly gig contraption is, but basically, once you have gone all the way around this, once you've activated it five times, it will give you an entire free bonus action, which is a huge deal. I mean, in this game, you're only playing five rounds. With three Zeppelins, that's 15 actions over the course of the game. So every bonus action you can get is a really big deal. And in an average game, you're going to get one, maybe two, if you really, or maybe even three, if you push it really hard. So Jen, she, um, she's upgraded, she's going to get income for the rest of the game, and she's closer to getting her bonus action. And now, it's my last Zeppelin. And you know what? I think I'm going to grab myself another mission. because I'll, I'll grab this mission here, because this gives me a new one. And this, uh, now I already have a goal to try to have 20 bucks at the end of the game to leverage this mission as best I can. And now I've got another one. Have 10 bucks left over, plus three crystals of any color, doesn't matter. And I can trade all of that in for nine points. So now I've got a goal of having three crystals and 30 bucks saved up at the end of the game so that I can get all these points. But that's not all. Because I landed here, I get to move forward one on my little whirly gig because I activated this space. And because this was a green action, I just made four more points. One, two, three, four. Boom. And my round is over. I, I'm pretty much done. There's, I'm, I've done my actions. And now Jen, she has two more actions she can do. Let's see. So, what is she going to do next? Well, she can't do any of these. <clears throat> she could get some money. And, you know, since she's got... Since this is a, a gray action, Jen has one gray crystal, so that means when she goes for money, she gets whatever it says, plus two additional money. She, well, she'd like to get another upgrade, but you can see it requires an A and a B, which is another green and another blue. Jen doesn't have any of those. So, she could instead say, 
Well, unfortunately, well, she'd like to get this blue over here, spend the money to get the blue and a green so she could get another upgrade, but she can't go here because I'm blocking it and also because she has to move forward in the timeline. What does she want to do? Well, so she, okay, so another upgrade is out. Does she want to come over here, get some more crystals and some victory points? And since this is the black outline, she would also get another wild card crystal. That's pretty good. Let's come over here. So Jen's going to come there. She gets two points. And she can pay two bucks. She can pay up to six bucks and get all three of those crystals. Although she already has um, the maximum of what do you call it? violet crystals. So there's no reason for her to spend two bucks because she literally cannot take this one. But what the heck? She'll spend four bucks. Five, get one in change to buy this black crystal and this orange crystal. So they get installed. Alrighty. And Jen just did a black action. She's got two crystals in the black, so she just got two wild cards. So, well now she could go on ahead and install these back as a green and a blue, which means she would have what she needs to be able to do this upgrade. But unfortunately, she has to move forward in time, so she can't get there anymore. So, where is she going to install these? Well, there's no reason to, I mean, this is full, this is full. She probably wants to install these someplace for the third and final action she's going to do. If she just comes up here and gets seven bucks, if she installs them right here, that means she'll get seven plus six more. So that's 13 bucks. That would be huge. Um, if she installed them, again, as a, as a blue and a green, she could come up here to do an orange action, which would let her go back in time to visit Anderson Creek. And by the way, in the back page of the rule book, there's a little almanac of what all these different things thematically mean. Anderson's Creek, the uh, gold discovery in 1851 at this creek started the Australian gold rush, which lured hundreds of thousands to Australia. So if you want to see the beginning of the Australian gold rush, Jen could um, come over here and she'd have to give up her, 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 you know, the blue and the green to be able to visit this. And because she has one orange, she would get the one orange reward, which is five points. If she had three oranges, she'd get five points and six bucks. If she had five oranges, she'd get five points, six bucks, and a wild card crystal. Now, I'm not saying she's going to do that. Um, let's see, but what else might she want to do? She could pump up her blue. That's actually, since Jen just spent all of her steam to get that wild crystal, Jen's going to put both of the wild she um, just got into blue. All right, and so I'm already done. I can't do anything more. Jen's last action, she is, let's see, I think she's going to go and visit a famous historical personage. She can come here, which means she draws three people and picks one to visit. She can come here and draws two and picks one. Or she can come here to draw two, pick one, and do another whirly gig. That's where she's coming. She's going to come here. Which means she moves forward again. Well, actually, no. She does that at the end of her turn. Well, actually, I, I think, you know, she does it, it before or after. Right, so she's getting closer to unlocking her first bonus action. And she gets to draw two historical people cards. And let's see who she can go and visit. Uh, Hero of Alexandria or Richard uh, Trevithick. I do not know who either of those people are. There are lots of well-known people, and I'm sure there are some folks out here watching this who say, these are very well-known people, but I do not know who they are. But the important thing is, when er Jen's going to pick one of these two cards and resolve it immediately. Now, it's kind of nice. Both types came out. There are blue-blues and blue-purples. If Jen picks this blue-blue, that means she can either take, when she can visit the hero of Alexandria, and either get two steam or alternatively, she can spend two up to two steam to get up to six points. One steam. Now, Jen has no steam at the moment, so I don't think it makes her any sense for her to try and spend steam, but she could get steam so that she'll have it for use later. Steam is very, very valuable. Of course, it's steam time, so you would expect it's a very important resource. Now, alternatively, Jen could visit Richard um, Trevithick here. Ah, who is Richard Trevithick? I'm sure he'll be on the list as well. Well, as it turns out, he was a British engineer who created the steam vehicle and the first steam locomotive. So, in steam time, no surprise that he would be a rock star. Of course we want to go visit that guy. Um, all right, who's the hero of Alexandria? He is a, a Greek mechanic and engineer, invented the uh, a alio or Oleopile, the first thermal engine in history. Okay, so I guess a lot of the famous people in history are people who led to our steampunk present that we are in. So anyway, so if Jen visits Richard here, she, um, she doesn't have a choice. She does this action. She'll get a steam and two victory points. And this little symbol here means the purple everybody else gets to do. So every other player would have the opportunity to spend two bucks to get one steam.
So Jen can get two steam for herself, or she can get a steam and two points, but she'd also give me the chance to get some steam, and I do have two bucks. She can see that. If I didn't have any money, then Jen would totally choose this because she would get the full benefit and I would get nothing. But since I could spend my cash to do that, I don't think Jen... I think she'll go on ahead and visit the Hero of Alexandria. So uh, Richard Trevithick is gone, Jen visits the Hero, and she'll just go on ahead and take two steam. One, two. So that was a nice visit, and she did her Whirly Gig, and because she did a blue action, and she's got two blue upgrades, she gets two more steam. So Jen's steam engine is half full now, and steam has two primary uses in the game. One, whenever you grab the first player marker, you can convert steam into points or into wildcard gems. And also, whenever you are having to pay gems to do upgrades or to go on historical expeditions, wherever you see these little icons that say, hey, you got to spend gems, um, <clears throat> Instead of spending the correct color gem, you can give up steam to turn any color gem into any into a wild card. So you know if you really needed to, if you wanted to do a thing and you needed a uh, a violet and a green and a blue, well Jen would have the violet, she'd have the blue, but she doesn't have any greens. She could spend a steam to turn one of her black into a green. So steam is a very very powerful tool, and Jen has just gotten herself quite a bit of it. And that was it. That was the first round of the game. And at the end of the round, we set up for the second round, which means every expedition that we didn't go on, it's out of the game. Every uh, upgrade that we didn't get, out of the game. All these gems we didn't buy, all go back in the bag, or in our case, the chicken cup. Basically, you set up for an entirely new round. Any missions we didn't take, out of the game. And the interesting thing is, Stonehenge, which used to be at the top, this was like our last stop, the last place we could go before the end of the round. Now, when we go into the second round, it becomes the first place that we can stop. Of course, we get our workers back. Bop -ba -da -bop -ba -da -bop. Bip -bip -bip. Oops, I put them in the wrong place. Here's the hangar for the Zeppelins. Here's the vault. Not that it really matters. So... Got but I've got it backwards. All right, so let's put all our Zeppelins back in the hangar. We got our money, um, and now we have to set up for the second round. We're in round two, so three new upgrades come out. The round two upgrades. Three new um, adventures come out, and you can see they go into spots. And now, if we were playing with more players, there would be four or five or even six adventures coming out. But in a two-player game, three come out every turn. And one, two, three more missions can be taken at various locations. Okay. Oh, and we've got to refill the gems. So let's just go on ahead and blah. Let's see. As you can see, I'm kind of sloppy about it. All right. I see that. Well, obviously, came down here, and this came down here. And I'm just bop, bop, bop. All right. There we go. Fairly random. All right. So there's a whole bunch of new gems. The uh, the time stream has changed. There's new missions to grab. There's new adventures going on. And um, now, as per usual, we can go and visit more people. And now, Jen. Oh, oh, oh. And also, the you know this in the first round, green or A, B, C, D. This is what the gems were. In the second round, it'll be different. It'll be, oh, now uh, anything that requires an A and a B needs black and fuchsia. And so that has changed up as well. And now we are ready to go into the second round. Jen is the first player. But remember, the first thing that happens at the beginning of the round is you get income for your upgrades. Jen gets one more buck, and she gets two more points. So she is almost caught up with me. She's got a ton of steam. I am really good at taking missions, but if I just spend all my game getting missions, I won't actually get the resources I need to complete my missions. And uh, I'm, I'm almost broke. And there is a whole new world waiting for us, or a whole new worlds throughout time that we can go and explore uh, by doing worker placement. And if you'd like to watch a little bit more, you can hit the I up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough. Or if you just want to hear what Jen and I thought of the game, you can go to Final Thoughts. I should say, in the extended playthrough, I'm going to introduce something else. The game comes with a couple of different little mini expansions built in. I was just showing you the basic game. In the extended, I'm going to show you how these very, very cool special power cards work, which are awesome, and they really add a lot more to the game. So if you want to see how these things work, everybody gets a deck of them at the beginning of the game, watch the extended playthrough through or alternate, just go to Final Thoughts, your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.